Hello and welcome to Coding with Curry. This is part two of my Firebase series with Flutter. In part one, we discussed how to set up email authentication. And in part two, we're going to show how to actually retrieve data from your Firestore database and display it in your app. We're already signed in as Julian. We have our feed screen here. We have our login screen here. We have our auth notifier. We have our user and we have our food API. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a new model. So I'm going to say new file, food.dart, okay? And we're gonna have a class food, and we're gonna have a few different fields here. We're going to have an ID, so a string ID, name, category, image, and we're gonna have a list of sub ingredients. List, sub ingredients. And for this one, we're gonna use a Firestore class name. We're gonna use timestamp, and we're going to call it created at, created at. Okay, and these are named this way because if we go to our Firestore database that I have here, we have a food collection with different foods that have name, image, ID, created at, category, sub-ingredients. So we have five different foods here. So let's go to our app here and we're going to create a named constructor. So we're gonna say food and I'm gonna call it from map just so it's clear what this is doing. And we're gonna pass in a map of string and type dynamic because it could be different things and call it data. So, and now we're going to assign the data map fields to the food fields here. So start with ID, ID equals data, and we're gonna get the ID field. So string ID, that's the key name. And then we do the same for the rest of these. So I'm going to fast forward through a bit of this. Okay, and now we have our data fields mapped to our food model here. So be sure that these names match the names that you have for the fields in your Firestore database. Okay, so now we have our model complete. Now we are going to create a new notifier. We go to our notifier and we do new file. And I'm going to call this food notifier, notifier.dart. And now we have a class food notifier. And then we do with change notifier. Okay, and now we want to first create a state for our list of foods. And let's call it underscore food list and assign an empty array. Okay, and now I also wanna do a food here to track our current food, current food. Now I want to create a way to get our food list. So I'm going to create a unmodifiable list view. It's going to be of type food. And then we're going to get the food list and return a unmodifiable list view and pass in the food list. So this just gets the food list and makes sure that we cannot change it once we get it from our notifier here. Okay, so now we wanna create one for the current food. So we do food, get current food, and then we just return the underscore current food. Okay, and now I want to create a setter for these. So I want to do set food list, and then I wanna pass in the list of foods and let's call it food list, okay? And then I just assign the food list to the food list equals food list. And this should be singular, okay? And then we just notify our app that that has changed and then we do notify listeners, okay? And now we create one for the current food. I'm gonna copy and paste this and do current food. And then we pass in our food and food and then we just set the current food to food and notify the app and that's it that's all we need to do for our 
notifier. So whenever we get our foods for the first time, we want to call this setter and set our food list. And whenever we change the current food, we call this current food setter. Okay, so now let's add our change notifier to our app. So let's do main.dart. And we have our multi provider here. So let's add a change. Let's actually just copy and paste this. And then we'll just say change, or sorry, food notifier. So now this is available to us throughout our entire app. Okay, so now we actually want to use this. So let's go to our feed screen. And we already have our auth notifier that we did in part one. So let's create one for our food notifier. So let's go down here to our build and let's add in our food notifier. And we'll do the same thing here, provider.of and food notifier context. And in this case, I do want to listen for changes. So I'm not going to set the listen flag to false. And now let's go down here to our body. Now I want to show a list of our foods from our database here. So I want to create a list view. So there's different ways to do that in Flutter. I'm going to use a builder. So first let's remove this entire block here. And I'm going to create a list view. But instead of using builder, I'm going to use the separated function here because I want to have dividers. So I'm going to say separate it. And I'm going to first have the item builder to build our widget for our list. And it takes in a build context, context, and it takes in a index, index. Okay, and now we actually want to return what widget we want to show for our list items. Return, and we're gonna just have a list tile. So list tile. For a list tile, we're gonna have a title. So our title will be the actual name of our food. So we're gonna have a text widget. And for our text widget, we're gonna have food notifier. So food notifier, and then we get our food list using the getter. And then we get the index. And then we do dot name. Okay, so we have a title here. Now I wanna show the category too. So we also have a subtitle for our list tile. So let's do subtitle. And I'm going to do something similar. I'm actually just gonna copy and paste this here. So like so, and then we're gonna have category. And you can see that we're missing something here. That's because we need to add in the item count too. So we need to have item count, and that'll be food notifier dot food list. And then we just say the length. Pretty simple so far. And now we need to add in a separator because we have list view dot separated. So we can just do this too. Okay, and now for our separator, we're going to return the widget that we wanna show as our separator. So this separator is cool because you can have an image or a text or whatever, but we're just gonna have a divider widget. So we're gonna return divider and we're gonna set the color to just be colors.black. Okay, so now we have no warnings. So let's save. Right now you won't see anything because we have no food list. So we need a way to retrieve our food. So we only want to do this one time when the feed is first built. So the first thing I want to do is I want to actually turn this into a stateful widget. Call this feed state. And then I'm going to extend state and make this of type feed. And then we're gonna have a stateful widget here. This will be feed. So we can get rid of this here. And this will be feed state. And we already have our state here. And we can get rid of this. And we want to return our feed state. Okay, so now this is a stateful widget and this is our state here. And I did this because I want to use our init state method. So we have init state and our state here. So we have init state. So when the state is first initialized, I want to actually retrieve our food list from our Firestore database. So to do that, I want to also use food notifier here. So 
food notifier. But this time, I don't want to listen for changes, so I just want to say listen false. But before we continue here, we actually need a API method to get our foods. So let's go to our food API, and we're going to create a method to get our foods. So let's go down here and create a method called get foods, and we're going to pass in our food notifier. Okay, let's go through it now. First, we want to get our Firestore database from our collection. So we do Firestore dot instance dot collection. And then we actually just put in the string for our collection, which you can see here is foods. So we go back and we say foods, get documents. So get documents returns a future query snapshot. Okay, so this is a future. So we actually want to make this an async function. So let's do async. I want to get that query snapshot from this line here. So I want to say query snapshot equals, and then we want to await this because it's a feature. So we need to wait for this to finish. So we do await. Okay. So now at this point we have access to our query snapshot here. Okay. So now I'm going to create a list of foods. So list of food and we'll just call it food list. Okay, let's import our food. Okay, and now I want to take the snapshot, snapshot, and then I want to loop through the list of foods. So we do snapshot, and then we get the documents from the snapshot. So we have a list of document snapshot, snapshot dot documents, and then we do dot for each, so we can loop through document. Okay, so instead of our loop here, I want to create a new food object. So we do food, food equals food. And then we have our constructor here, which is called from map. So from map, and then we pass in our document dot data, which is a string dynamic map. And that's what we pass into our food here. Okay, hope this all makes sense so far. So instead of our loop here, we have our food that we just created. So we want to add that to this local food list, underscore. And let's do underscore food list dot add. And then we add the food to that. Okay. And then we actually want to notify the app that we have a new food list. We just take our food notifier, food notifier dot food list. So that's our setter here. And then we just assign it to underscore food list. And that's it. So whenever we call this and we get our foods from the Firestore database, the notifier gets called. And then whoever is actually listening for that will get notified of the change. Okay, so that is our food API. So let's go back to our feed screen. So we have our food notifier in init state. Let's actually get our foods now. So let's do get foods from our API and we just pass in our food notifier here. When the feed first loads, so when the feed screen first loads, we call get foods, we pass in our food notifier. When we have our foods, that gets set in our food notifier. And now we want our feed screen to reflect that change. So we have our food notifier here too. When that changes, this gets updated and we get our food list here with our name and category. So let's save, let's save our food API and let's reload. So you can see we have our food items here. We have five here and five here. Okay. So now let's add the image that you see in the image field here. So we're going to go back here and for our list tile, we're going to add a image widget. So for a list tile, we have access to a field here called leading. So leading is a widget to display before the tile. It'll be on the left side here. Do leading and this will return a image widget. So we're going to say image and this will be a network image. So we can do network and then we just pass in the URL of the image, which is just the image field. So we do 
copy and paste here, and then we just say image. Okay, so let's save and reload. And as you can see here, some of these are different sizes. I want these all to be the same size, so I'm going to just add some styling here, put a comma here, and I'm going to say width will be, I'm going to say maybe something like 120-ish. And I'm also going to have a box fit. So I'm going to say fit. So fit is how you define how the image fits into the container. So fit, and I'm going to say box fit, and you have different options here. I like fit width. So fit width will cover the entire width that you set, and it might cut off some of the top and bottom, but that's okay for our app. So fit width. Okay, let's save and reload. And now you can see that our images all take up the same amount of width. Okay, so now we have our food items in our list, and it looks pretty nice. I want to create one more screen for this video to make it seem more like an actual app. So I'm gonna create a detail screen. So I'm gonna go down here to screens, say new file, and say detail.dart. Okay, so for this, I'm gonna create a stateless widget. So stateless widget. And I'm gonna call it food detail. I don't really need this right now. Okay, let's import our material. Okay, and for our build function here, I'm going to return a scaffold. So scaffold, so the app bar will have a title. So the title will actually be the food that we choose in our list here. I'm going to use our food notifier again. So instead of our build here, create a food notifier object, food notifier equals provider dot of, and then let's say food notifier. Okay, and then we pass in the context and I'm not going to listen for changes. This will only be used to retrieve the current food object. Now for our title, it'll be a text widget. And then the text will be food notifier dot current food dot name. I'm going to go back to our feed screen and in our list tile, we're going to add a on tap function. So beneath our subtitle, let's add on tap. So on tap is how you would normally handle like pressing on a list item. On tap here, and then we want to create a function. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the current food to be the item that we click on in our list here. So I'm gonna say food notifier dot current food. So that's our setter for this current food. And then equal food notifier dot food list and then we get the index. So this is why I created the current food object in our food notifier to store our current food. And next, I'm going to actually navigate to the food detail screen. Navigator dot of, and then we do context, which we already have in there. And then we push our route. Okay, so for the route here, it's a material page route. So material page route. And then we have a builder here, the builder takes in the build context. And then we return the widget we want to show. So we return food detail. Okay. When we tap on this current food, we set the current food to whatever we tap on. So if we tap sushi, the sushi food model will be assigned to this here. And then we go to our food detail screen. So you could just pass in the current food to this, but for this app, I want to decouple the food detail screen from the feed screen. So we don't have to pass in anything here. Okay, so let's go to our food detail. So we have our food notifier dot current food dot name. So body, and this will be a centered widget. So center, the child will be a container and the child of the container will be a column, which will have different children. For this, right now, let's just create a text and say detail. And let's just test this out first. So let's reload. Okay, and let's click on uh, pizza. Okay, so you can see our pizza is here and we have detail here. Okay, so everything looks good so far. We have confirmed that our current food item is set. 
in our food notifier. So let's keep going with this. So let's uh, remove this text here. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to show our image from the network. We're going to say image dot network and we're going to say food notifier dot current food dot image. Okay. So if you want to, you could just cache this, but I'm just doing this to save a bit of time. So let's reload. Let's click on pizza again. And you can see our pizza is here. Okay. We have this looking good so far. Let's add more to our widget array. First, let's add a size box to add some spacing. So size box and the height will be something. Let's do like 32, 34. This should be okay. So now let's add some more text for our pizza detail here. So let's do text and food notifier dot current food dot name. You can see we have pizza here. So let's do style in this is a textile. So we're gonna have a font size of something bigger, maybe 18. And then let's add a, I don't know. Actually 18 is pretty small. Let's do like big, let's do 40. Okay. And now let's add another text for our category. So let's do text and we're going to do food notifier dot current food and dot category. Okay, let's save. So we have pizza Italian and let's add some styling for this too. So let's do 18 and let's do a font style too. So let's do font style and I'm going to do font style. So this is the font style widget dot italic. Okay, so that looks pretty nice. And now I want to show our uh, sub ingredients. So our sub ingredients is a array of strings. So it's a list. So for this, I'm going to show a grid. Grids are pretty easy in Flutter. I'm going to add the grid view here, and then I'm going to say dot count. So dot count allows you to specify the amount of spacing that you have in your grid, the amount that you have going across. So the number of items you have going across and going down, for example. So dot grid count. And then we have to add a few different options here. Cross axis count is one of them. So cross axis count is the amount of items going across. So I'm going to say three for our case. And then I'm going to add a few different items here. I'm going to add some spacing. So cross axis spacing. I'm going to say four. And then we have more spacing. We have main axis spacing. I'm going to say four. So we have a gap of four going across and going down in our grid. So we also want to add the children field here. So children represents the widgets that you want to show in your grid. In our case, we actually just want to map through the list of foods. We want to say food notifier dot current food dot sub ingredients. To map through it, we just say dot map. And then at the end of this, we can do dot to list. Okay, so for our map here, we want to first get our ingredient. So this is the current ingredient that we map through currently. Ingredient. Okay, and then we want to return a card. So a card is just a widget built into Flutter that represents a card. Okay, so for our card here, we're gonna assign a color to it. So we're gonna say color, say colors dot black, make it a little bit opaque. So something like black 54. And then we're gonna have a child for our card. So our child represents the actual data instead of our card or the widget instead of our card. It's going to be a centered widget, so it's going to be center. And the child is going to be just a text. So the text will just be a string, which is our ingredient. So ingredient, and let's save this so far and reload. Okay, and let's click on pizza. Okay, so we have an error here. Let's figure out what this error is. When you're working with a grid, you have to add a few different options in here that I forgot. So the first one is the shrink wrap. So shrink wrap, I wanna set it to true. This makes sure that everything is uh, wrapped nicely inside of your view here. And I also wanna add a scroll direction. 
So score direction, I want it to be axis that vertical. Okay, so let's reload this. And let's add pizza. So pizza here. So you can see we have our grid here with pizza. Let's add one that has more ingredients. So let's go to sushi. And you can see we have our sushi here. Let's add a bit of styling to our text here. Let's do style and let's do text style. Let's set the color to colors.white and let's make the font a little bit bigger. Uh, let's do something like 16 and reload. Okay, and if you want to, you could add some more spacing here if you want. You can just do another size box here under the subtitle or the category, I mean. Uh, let's do 16. That looks a little bit better. And let's add some padding to our grid here. So let's do padding and edge insets all. And we'll do something like, something small, maybe eight. Let's reload. Okay, and that looks a lot better. Okay, so that's it. We have our food being shown from our Firestore database, and we have a detail screen that holds our current food from our food notifier. So in the next video, we'll discuss how to create and upload foods along with editing existing foods. So stay tuned for more and happy coding. Bye.